Well, hello again, my friends, and welcome to the Barnabas Minute. Today, I would like to jump into the middle of Psalm 103 and look with you at verses 10 through 11. Now, we have visited this psalm once before. Uh, we looked at the last four verses of the psalm, and it's the one that begins, Bless the Lord, O my soul, everything that is within me, bless his holy name. And uh, we learn that to bless him means to thank God wholeheartedly from our innermost being for the blessings that he has shared and uh, given to us. And almost in the middle of that chapter, it gives us a little glimpse of what God is like in and of himself. And it said in verse 8 that the Lord is compassionate and that he's gracious, and he's slow to anger, and abounding in mercy. And so here we come then to verses 10 and 11 of Psalm 103. And I'll read them to you first, and then we'll, we'll break them down together. Here we go. He, this is God, has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor rewarded us according to our guilty deeds. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his mercy towards those who fear him. Now, what's he saying there? Something very interesting. The beginning, he says that God has not dealt with us. He doesn't deal with us according to our sins, according to what our sins merit from us. And he says almost the same thing again. This is the way that Hebrews uh, speak in ancient times or when they're writing poetry. They'll say one thing and then they'll say the same thing again in a little bit different wording, a little bit more powerfully. And so in that second part, he says, nor has God rewarded us. We think of a reward as something for, for something that we've done good. Well, it can also be a reward for something we've done bad. And so he has not rewarded us according to our guilty deeds. Now, that's the word for a transgression, for depravity, for perverseness. So God doesn't deal with us according to our everyday sins, nor does he deal fully with us according to our depravity and what we truly deserve. So, wh what does that mean? How does that play out? How is that a blessing to us? Verse 11. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, it says, and how high are the heavens above the earth? Well, I don't know. I mean, I, scientists, I think, are still trying to measure how vast the universe is. So in other words, as far as the heavens are up there, so great is his mercy towards those who fear him. And that word there for mercy, it means compassion. It means pity. But it's also uh, uh, tied with uh, covenant loyalty. When people are in a covenant with each other, they show loyalty and compassion, long-suffering maybe, if you will. That's kind of an old-school word, towards one another. But what, And this is great in and of itself. This is how God deals with us. But look at the last couple of words there, and here's what really drew my eye. All of this that we're talking about here applies to those who fear him. And my friends, I think we are forgetting about this in our modern day society, in our Christian walk, and that is the fear of the Lord. That word there for fear is the normal everyday word for fear. It's like the fear that if you're walking with a friend in a forest and all of a sudden you turn around and a bear's charging you, that adrenaline fear that gets you going, gets you moving, gets action up in you, that's the type of fear it's talking about. And it's saying here that God offers these blessings and this mercy towards those who fear him. Now, I know that almost sounds like a contradiction. Why are we supposed to fear God? I mean, doesn't perfect love cast out fear? Well, this isn't that type of a fear. It's so much as it is the fear that maybe if, if you were fortunate enough to have a, a godly father on the earth and he, out of love, maybe disciplined you or doesn't discipline you every single time you do something wrong, but he uses discipline to help you to grow and so forth, is that health, healthy, maybe like reverential fear, that, that awe of somebody superior and stronger to you. They love you, yes, but yet you still fear the punishment. And so this is what it's talking about. But for those of us who do have that reverential awe for God, that fear, that pure fear for, the God, for God our Creator, He is, as it says here, compassionate, merciful, slow to anger, and His mercy is measured by the boundlessness of the universe which means that it is infinite even as he is. What a wonderful thing to contemplate 
for those of us who fear him, to know that his mercy is infinite. I hope this will give you strength today. Let's close with a word of prayer. Thank you, Lord God, for giving us these utterances in your word, things to give us strength, even in the midst of some of it, which is kind of scary, that we have to have fear for you. There are so many times, I don't even know how many times the word fear the Lord is in the word of God. It's a lot. It's very important. But along with that reverential awe of you, our great and heavenly Father, our Creator, there is also that promise that you are slow to anger, that you are compassionate and gracious, and your mercy is abounding to us. Thank you for these blessings as we go forth to live for you. For we ask it in Christ's name. Amen. All right, my friends, go in peace. Until next time.